This week in Rio Pirate Ball. What's up, everybody? Greg Mercer here for This Week in Real Pirate Ball. The 2012 season is now underway, so let's recap week one of Pittsburgh Pirates baseball. The prevailing theme of the first week was the atrocious offense the Pirates displayed over the first two series. It's super califragilistic, expialidocious, even though the sound of it is something quite atrocious. The Pirates were blanked in the opener and have only scored 10 runs in the first six games. The team faced three of the best pitchers in the National League in Roy Halladay, Cliff Lee, and Clayton Kershaw, which certainly didn't help. It's a little concerning, but let's look a little bit deeper into the stats. The Pirates currently have a 246 batting average of balls in play stat, a sabermetric stat used to show how many balls in play actually turn into hits. The Major League average is normally near 300, so it would suggest that the Pirates have been a bit unlucky so far. The Bucks also have a 25.7 line drive percentage, second highest in the majors. Line drives have the best chances of turning into hits, but right now they're not. It's pretty early in the season, and although most people expect the Pirates to be deficient in power and play small ball due to their team speed, it may be a little too soon to jump to conclusions. Well, what do you think? It's a prototype. Huh, that's, that's exactly as you described it. As bad as the offense was, the pitching for the Pirates was quite good the first time through the rotation. <laughs> Eric Bedard, Jeff Carstens, and even Kevin Correa all pitched at least six innings and only gave up one earned run each in their first start. This is the same formula that the Pirates used in the first half of last season to keep themselves in the thick of the NL Central race. It'll be interesting to see how the Pirates rework the rotation as Charlie Morton and A.J. Burnett return from the disabled list. I have to imagine that Correa will go to the bullpen, but it'll be a nice problem to have if the Pirates have a better-than-replacement-level pitcher in reserve if a starter goes down. Alex Presley has opened some eyes in the first week of the season. Although it didn't take a whole lot, he's had one of the best seasons so far among all Pirates hitters. He hit 318 this week and had a five-game hitting streak to start the season. Presley has taken a simple approach to hitting and looks to be content on taking a level swing to hit clean singles. I had a bad feeling about a sophomore slump for Presley as yet another small, speedy outfielder, but in the early going, Presley is showing some signs of being legit. Hey, my daughter, that means hey, man. Unfortunately, we may have to rename Neil Walker as Neil Crawler after his awful first week at the plate. Crawling in my skin, these wounds, they will the Pirates cleanup hitter has started off 1 for 18 and has an OPS plus of negative 53. I didn't even know people could have a negative OPS+. Plus. As usual, if there's a negative stat that can be invented, the Pirates players will probably be in the discussion. There's no way that Walker will stay this cold for long, though. He's hit several line drives right at infielders, and eventually those outs are going to turn into hits. Still, it'd be nice if the Pirates could get some more production from the middle of their order, and Walker is the linchpin to the future success. God damn it! Manager Clint Hurdle has not hesitated to turn his corner infielders into a bona fide platoon in week one. First Italian just got hit, 15 clicks north of here. Charlie had Claymore strung up in the trees, blew a whole f***ing platoon to pieces. Bad shit. Pedro Alvarez and Casey McGee have both gotten time at third, and Garrett Jones and Matt Haig have split the first base duties. Hurdle feels that the team might be able to exploit lefty-righty matchups to increase run potential. Some feel that this will only hinder players' ability to hit all pitchers, especially Pedro Alvarez. I personally don't find anything wrong with sitting Pedro against tough lefties. He's been terrible against them so far, so if he has moderate success against mediocre southpaws, he may be able to gain future confidence and experience. 
This team needs to do everything in its power to score runs, so if utilizing matchups helps the team win, so be it. Much has been ballyhooed about the tough schedule of games the Pirates were given to start the 2012 season. In the first month, the Pirates were scheduled to play each division winner from last year, along with a West Coast swing and four games in Atlanta. There are legitimate worries that the Pirates may get beaten down by these good teams and take them out of the running quickly. Contrary to this belief, I think this can only help the Pirates. Let's think about it. Nearly every year, the Pirates play fairly well over the first two months of the season and hover around 500, and then start to tank as their lack of talent and depth catches up to them. If they play better teams early on, I think they have a better chance of beating them. With more games against good teams out of the way early, their late season schedule should be filled with relatively easier games, which may allow them to steal some more wins when they normally don't. Someone comes along with a crazy dream nope. It seems so simple that you wanna scream Now why didn't I think of that? Why didn't I think of that? The Pirates opened the year with a series against the Philadelphia Phillies at PNC Park. Game number one was a great pitcher's duel between Phillies ace Roy Halladay and Pirates hired gun Eric Bedard. The Pirates started out with two hits and then managed to get zero for the rest of the game. The Pirates ended up losing one to nothing. Game 2 was another low-scoring affair, which the Bucks won 2-1 to one in walk-off fashion. Jeff Carsons went pitch-for-pitch pitch with Cliff Lee, and the teams were knotted at 1 after 9 innings. With a man on third, Alex Presley hit a splintered bat slow roller to short and managed to barely beat the throw to first as the winning run scored. On Sunday, the Pirates won another game in walk-off fashion. Vance Worley held the Pirates in check for 7 innings except for a booming Pedro Alvarez homer to the river walk in right field. Down 4-1, to one, the Bucks rallied to tie the game in the 8th thanks to Matt Higgs' pinch-hit RBI single, his first hit in the majors. Andrew McCutcheon hit a long double off the wall in the ninth, scoring the winning run as the Pirates prevailed 5-4. to four. The Bucks once again made an early season trip to the West Coast to face the Dodgers in LA. On Tuesday, the Pirates lost yet another close game in a 2-1 to one defeat. Kevin Correa carried over his road dominance from last year. However, reigning Cy Young winner Clayton Kershaw kept pace, and Andre Ethier hit a solo homer in the 8th to sink the Pirates. Chad Billingsley was just as dominant over the Pirates' suspect offense in a 4-1 loss on Wednesday. The only bright spot was a Clint Barmas homer, which snapped his 0-12 streak to start the year. Thursday's game was very similar to Wednesday's. One Pirate hit a homer, Michael McHenry this time, but the Pirates still couldn't get enough runs across as they lost 3-2. The Pirates struck out 27 times in the three games, including five times caught looking in Thursday's game. So far, the Pirates look to be playing the same exact way they were to start last year. They can't hit a lick, but they're pitching well enough to stay in games, which has resulted in some late-inning wins. Winning close still counts, but as the season wears on and bats heat up, the Pirates will need to score more than one or two runs to keep up with the other teams in the National League. The next three series will see the Pirates play three more teams with good pitching the San Francisco Giants, Arizona Diamondbacks, and St. Louis Cardinals. I'm going to San Francisco to see the Pirates play on Sunday as part of a week-long vacation, so that means Corp won't be seen next week. I'll be back in two weeks with another edition of This Week in Real Pirate Ball. Later.